Mm. It's good too. Just film that upside down. This is Una, and she wants to give you fair warning that what you're about to see includes harvesting of a deer, which means actually killing of the deer and bringing it back. And she's not very interested. Una, we're trying to tell the people a message. Say, it's going to show the killing of a deer. It's going to show uh, me driving the deer back on the four-wheeler. I don't have the skinning of it and all that, but just so you know, she's letting you know that the number that you've seen down here at the bottom, beep, this whole time, look at the number. That's where you want to start if you just want to see the cooking of the deer and you do not wish to see the killing of the deer or the driving back on the four-wheeler of the deer or anything that includes a dead animal. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go see what we got. It dropped right where I hit it. So I know it was a good shot. Don't have to go track it. Which is good. Hopefully she's got some weight on her. Maybe 116. That'd be nice. 110, 120, that'd be nice. Ooh, got her right in the shoulder. I was looking really close, trying to make sure I didn't shoot a button buck or anything. That's well, small. Let's, we'll see what it weighs. you can do when you're by yourself at the camp. You're the only one that can pick it up. You got no help from nobody. Let's see. Come on. Big girl. Uh, get up here. Uh, all right. Let's get that head up here. There you go. Getting blood all over my foot. Oh wheel. All right. <clears throat> Looks like I hit one shoulder, but it came out the neck, so that's good. At least I didn't get the other shoulder too. Keep an eye on her while I drop. Make sure she don't go nowhere.
get some back strap. This is from a deer that I just killed this weekend. So fresh back strap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it in two different ways. I'm going to show you how to cut it and how to make it two different ways. The most traditional, I'd say traditional, the way most people like it is fried. You always hear about fried back strap. I like to cook mine fried too, but uh, I also like to cook it like a steak as well. So we're going to do it both ways, show you. One of the steak recipes, I'm going to put it in a marinade for four hours before cooking it. And the other pieces, I'm just going to do no marinade and cook them straight up. I like them both ways, so I'm going to do them both ways. And I'm not going to do very many fried, but I'm just doing some fried just for this video so you can see that process as well. Um, I might do two or three of them fried just to show you how to do that. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do with a wild deer, and I've gotten most of it trimmed off, but this uh, silvery stuff, you want to get as much of that off as you can. Um, so it is not on there. That makes the meat a little bit harder. You don't want that. So we're going to take that off. I'm going to cut that little end off. And let's just kind of shave, almost like filleting uh, some of the silver off of here. Be careful with the knife. Uh, just sharpen this one. It should be really sharp. But it's having a little trouble here. Sometimes you can pull up on that membrane and get some of it, but that silvery skin is going to be a little tougher. This one is much sharper. Yeah, that's going to work a little bit better. Most dangerous tool in the kitchen is a dull knife. to get me a new set of knives apparently because that did not do great so as you can see got that little silvery piece off and it just leaves nice good red meat there I'm gonna cut this little piece off and then I'll probably just skip ahead to the next step now that I got the majority of that off what I'm gonna do is for the little steak pieces I guess you can call them it's back strap so it's not steak but I'm gonna be cooking it like a steak that's why I keep saying steak I'm gonna cut those pieces a little bit longer uh, about two inches each slice and this little smaller section I'll uh, I'll do these about an inch and these are the ones I'm gonna use for the fry I'm just gonna cut four of them. I'm gonna just do four for the fry. I'm gonna set those aside. We'll fry that one. That one's a smaller piece. And we'll cut this end off and we'll fry that little piece. And I'll make this one a steak. That one's got a nice thick area. So this is how thick that back strap is that I, I cut off. The deer was about a hundred pound deer. So that's about how big they are for hundred pound deer. I'll make some nice little steaks. Alright, for this next step, I'm going to use Allegro Game Tame. I like this stuff. It, uh, it, it cuts the gamey taste a little bit. It's recommended to leave it in the fridge marinating for four to five hours. But, and just so you know what's in it, this has soy sauce, it has water, they have the lime juice and vinegar that helps to tenderize the meat, spice, whatever the spices are, I'm sure that's their secret ingredients, citric acid, that also helps tenderize dried garlic, paprika, lime oil, and that's it. We're just gonna take the meat that we want to have marinated, 
We're gonna put it in the bag. It's just a quart storage bag. I like to put my thicker pieces in the marinade. I'm gonna do these just regular. I like them both ways, so I do them both ways. And we're just gonna pour it in here and put it in the refrigerator for about four hours so it's ready to cook tonight. And just kind of mix it up, shake it up. For the fried back strap, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your pieces of back strap and you're gonna take your meat hammer. You're gonna use the end with the little hammery bits in it. See that hammery bits? Flat, no bits, hammery bits. You wanna hammer, hammer that meat. You wanna get it nice and flat. You don't wanna, you don't wanna decimate it, but you wanna get it real thin. Hit it on the other side a couple times. It doesn't take much pressure and you just get this thin piece of back strap here. So you wanna do that with all the pieces that you're going to be frying. Smash them out. I like to flip them, smash them on the other end. Sometimes it gets a little sticky. And you might want to try to come up. Make sure you're not smashing it all together. It's a bigger piece, so I'm gonna cut it in half. We're gonna make, whoop, we're gonna make more than two pieces. <laughs> Okay, I want to make sure that this is going to be mixed nice and even. So what I'm going to do is put this in a Tupperware here and just kind of shake it up. Shake it up a little bit. Don't want them to stick together. That's why I'm kind of shaking it as I'm putting it in right now. All right, and then just throw the top on. And then give it a good shake. You don't want to beat it up do it real hard just nice light shakes a shake and a roll so you're getting every surface and that's it they're ready to fry all right we had a good marinade happening for a while I'm just gonna use a colander get all that marinade out let that sit and drip dry and then we'll get it in the pan so the next thing I do for the fried pieces is I want to get it to 350 and we're getting close really quick I got I put it in a small pan uh, skillet so want to get up to 350 when you put your meat in there it's going to cool down the grease a little bit as well so a little a hair over 350 is good and it'll it'll knock down the temperature a little bit and if you don't know you could definitely burn um, anything you fry. So anytime I do fried fish or even french fries, anything, um, I always make sure that I use a thermometer and I get it to exactly 350. I'll cook when I'm cooking and wait for it to get back to 350 again before putting in the next. Because if you take it out and immediately throw in another thing of fish, another thing of deer, or whatever it is, you're going to keep cooling down that oil a little bit more and a little bit more. So bring it back up the temp, then put the next batch in. All right, let's get a little test piece, see if that grease is ready. I'd say that's pretty ready. Yeah, 350. A nice just rolling. Yeah, you get it to 350 and it's just lightly frying. If you, if you throw it in there and it's popping all over the place, then you got it super hot. You just want a good light fry. And we'll fit as many pieces as we can in there. A little slotted spoon to be able to get them out. You just want to get them golden. We went from 350 all the way down to 300 degrees. 50 degrees just by throwing that in there. That's how quick that goes down. That's what I was talking about. So 
you want to make sure that you get it just right because if it's too hot you'll burn it if it's not hot enough you'll you'll get just greasy fried foods you want to be able to taste the food not the grease i don't know exactly how hot that is but seven seems to get, be good for this Dropping a little oil. Alright, that's the first batch there. Like I was saying, you just want to get them golden brown. And then this is heated up, so let's throw on the first couple pieces. Multitask here. Look at that. Ooh. A little bit of oil at the bottom. We're just going to Put them in and sear them on both sides, a couple minutes on both sides. Alright, so you can see that that's the marinated pieces. And just for reference, you can see that this is the unmarinated pieces, just the raw pieces. Definitely a lot redder. And a couple minutes on that side, and let's flip them. A couple minutes on this side. Now when you take these off, they'll continue to cook a little bit, so just a few minutes on each side is all you need, just like a steak. Keep it a little red on the inside. Actually, I got it really hot, so I'm going to take it out pretty quick. I'm just going to sear this side and take it out right away, actually. I'm going to take it out and see what it looks like. Put the other pieces in while it's still hot. I don't know why I got them in a cup. I was just trying to keep them separate. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Thicker pieces. Put it right in the center. That's what it looks like. I think that's good. Alright, I'm going to just flip it over to the other side now. It's been a few minutes. Yeah, that does look good. That's some hot tears. Woo! Let it sit on that side for three, four, five minutes. Alright, let's check out this piece. This is the unmarinated one. Looks like I might have cooked that one a little longer. Well, that's pretty good. Let's see how it tastes. Good too. Just film that upside down. <laughs>